Livestock contribute to approximately 80% of agricultural GDP in developing countries. Majority of the rural and poor farmers depend on livestock for their livelihoods. The diseases affecting livestock are a major threat to sustainable livelihoods of the rural communities in India. Traditional farmers have adopted several indigenous methods and socio-cultural procedures using natural products to treat various ailments and diseases in livestock and poultry for generations. Ethno-veterinary practices comprise of knowledge, belief and decades of experience of the indigenous people pertaining to healthcare and management of animals, which has been evolved through observations and trials and passed on verbally from one generation to the next. In remote places, which are not easily accessible to modern veterinary services, the local people depend solely upon these traditional practices for healing their animals. Ethno-veterinary practice enhances economic sustainability and people's perception of relationship between environment and animal health care. Ethno-veterinary medicine has been in practice since 1800 BC. Ethno-veterinary medicines developed by local healers and traditional livestock farmers in field condition for centuries comprises of compound mixture of various medicinal plants and plant products namely leaves, seeds, barks, stem or roots which are locally available and cheaper than standard treatments. These medicinal plants and its products are indispensable sources of first aid medicine without any adverse effects or toxicity. They also serve as an ideal alternative to the conventional drugs with regard to development of microbial resistance and for providing safe food to the society. Medicinal plants and their medicinal properties is gaining importance throughout the world in both human beings and livestock since they have excellent curative properties for several incurable diseases like tumors, jaundice, paralysis, etc. India is home to more than 500 medicinal plants and has a rich tradition of cultivating and utilizing these medicinal plants in day-to-day -day life. The pharmacological basis of some of the plants and their ingredients are Betel leaves Adamant creeper, Pirandai in Tamil Onions Ginger Garlic Pepper Cumin Turmeric Turmeric 
Alessandro Graffis Paniculata Nilavembu in Tamil. Tumbai Plant Acalypha Indica Kuppameni in Tamil Tulsi Leaves Veterinary medicine is an accumulated knowledge about practices and healthcare applications using natural products in animal health. It has been very unique in assuring over 90% success in every recipe. We started with mastitis, then we went to address other issues like adder edema, adder parts, warts, and then simple indigestion, bloat, whatever you call it as in terms of impaction, everything related to GA tract of ruminants. And then anorexia could also be easily dealt with like this. So ethnobiotic medicine is a very scientifically based, wonderful knowledge system. It's a robust system and it is a dynamic system wherein it imbibes a lot of qualities which is required for the biological application in the field. We get the milk, meat and egg free from antibiotic and chemical synthetic residues. Ethno veterinary practices differ from one place to another and they also differ among communities. Over centuries, people have developed their own remedies and manipulative techniques to maintain their livestock in good health. Some of the important ethno veterinary practices used by the folklore for treating their livestock are as follows Mastitis, an inflammatory disease of udder caused by pathogenic microorganisms leads to severe economic loss for the farmers in a short span of time. Hence, it is essential to render treatment as early as possible. In the case of mastitis treatment, ethno-veterinary medicine has been standardized by EVM Center of Thanobas and to treat a single cow, 250 grams of a single whole leaf of aloe vera 50 grams of turmeric powder and 5 grams of calcium oxide, slaked lime, are taken and ground to make a thick paste. Then, a handful of the thick paste must be mixed with water to make a watery preparation which is brick red in colour. The affected teat must be milked as much as possible to remove all the spoiled milk inside the udder. Then, the above liquid must be liberally applied all over the udder. The procedure has to be repeated as many as 6 to 10 times a day and the preparation has to be made fresh every day. Udder Box is a contagious mild skin disease caused by a virus which affects the udder of cows and is characterized by pustular eruptions. For treatment of udder pox, 15 leaves of tulsi, 10 grams of turmeric, 25 grams of cumin seeds and 10 cloves of garlic are needed. All the ingredients must be ground well and mixed with butter. It has to be applied frequently after milking the cows. Timpani or bloat is a predominant condition in cattle. The ingredients needed to treat bloat for a single cow includes 10 beetle leaves, 10 tender stems of adamant creeper, pirandai, 100 grams of ginger, 15 cloves of garlic, 10 numbers of pepper, 25 grams of cumin and 10 grams of turmeric. The cumin and pepper should be ground well and mixed with the remaining ingredients. Then it is made into small balls by mixing with 100 grams of jaggery 
and administered once orally by impregnating with common salt. Simple indigestion in cattle occurs as a result of dietary factors that can alter the ruminal environment. Ingredients needed to treat a single adult cattle or four members of sheep or goat are 10 numbers of betel leaves, 10 tender stems of adamant creeper, 100 grams of ginger, 15 cloves of garlic, 10 grams of pepper, 25 grams of cumin, 10 grams of turmeric and 2 dried chilies. The dried items, that is, chilies, pepper and cumins must be ground first, followed by the green leaves. Then, they can be mixed together along with 100 grams of jaggery and applied over the tongue. Lumpy skin disease is a viral disease affecting cattle, sheep and goats. With regard to treatment for lumpy skin disease, the herbal ingredients used are 10 betel leaves, 10 grams of pepper, 10 grams of salt and 100 grams of jaggery. The ingredients are ground well and small portions are smeared over the tongue of the cattle once every hour on the first day, once in two hours on second day and once in three hours on third day and so on for five to seven days. In the case of maggot wounds, due to complications of LSD and other diseases, or fresh cut wounds, 10 bulbs of garlic, 20 grams of turmeric, and 100 ml of gingerly oil should be used. The garlic and turmeric powder should be ground and mixed in slightly warmed oil and applied only after thoroughly cleaning and drying the fresh wound. For maggot wounds, which are common in cattle, a small piece of camphor, about 5 grams, has to be added along with above-mentioned ingredients and used. For bovine ephemeral fever, necessary herbal ingredients needed to treat one dairy cattle includes 10 grams of cumin seeds, 5 grams of pepper, 5 bulbs of onions, 5 beetle leaves, and 10 leaves of Andrographis paniculata, Nilavimbu in Tamil. The cumin seeds must be ground first and mixed with other ingredients after grinding them. Then jaggery must be added and applied over the tongue. It needs to be administered twice a day for 3 days. To treat dermatitis in cattle, the herbal ingredients needed include 15 leaves of Acalypha indica, Kuppameni in Tamil, 5 leaves of Cassia alata, Seema yagati in Tamil, 10 bulbs of garlic, 10 grams of turmeric and 250 ml of Pongamia seed oil. The fresh leaves taken should be ground along with garlic, mixed and applied with warm or gingerly oil on the affected surface. Foot and mouth disease is a dreaded disease affecting cloven-footed animals like cattle, sheep and goats. In the case of foot lesions, the external application includes ingredients namely 10 pearls of garlic, 10 grams of turmeric, 10 leaves of tulsi, 10 leaves of kopameni, 10 leaves of henna and handful of curry leaves and the same has to be ground well boiled in gingerly oil, cooled and applied over the foot wounds till complete cure occurs. Infertility in dairy cattle and buffaloes occurs due to mineral deficiency, ovary-related problems, failure of conception due to irregular estrus cycle, etc. Hence, to treat infertility, Household materials and herbal plants like two numbers of radish, two leaves of aloe vera, 
two handful of moringa leaves, two handful of Cissus quadrangularis, and two handfuls of curry leaves are used. Take one radish and smear over the common salt and provide wholly, one in the morning and one in the evening for four days. One to four. For the next four days, five to eight, take aloe vera, just remove the thorns, dip in jaggery and salt and feed the animal morning and evening. The third ingredient is handful of moringa leaves Grind well and mix with jaggery and salt and apply over the tongue for the next four days twice a day, morning and evening. 9 to 12. Then for the next four days, 13 to 16, take two handfuls of Cissus quadrangularis, pirande, crush with jaggery and mix with salt and smear over the tongue of the animal. For the last 4 days, 17 to 20, 4 handful of curry leaves, most ubiquitous plant is taken and mixed with jaggery, touched with salt and smeared over the tongue twice a day, morning and evening. The most important point is that the above mentioned herbal treatment should be started preferably on the first day of the estrus cycle and to be given for 20 days continuously. In the case of poisonous bite of an insect or a small snake, 15 leaves from Lucas Aspera, Tumbai plant in Tamil, 15 bulbs of onions, 15 leaves of Andrographis paniculata, Nilavember in Tamil, 5 beetle leaves, 10 pearls of pepper, 15 grams of cumin seeds, and 50 grams of common salt are needed. Cumin seeds and pepper are crushed well and mixed with the remaining ingredients to make a fine paste. The paste is mixed with 100 grams of jaggery, small amount of salt and made into small portions and smeared on the tongue and gums of the animal in a single administration. Ethno-veterinary medicine, which plays an important role in the animal health care system, is perceived as simple, cost-effective and environment-friendly. Many institutions and their scientists are actively involved in scientifically evaluating and validating the efficacy of ethno-veterinary medicines and practices as a first aid in livestock and poultry. In recent years, Ethno-veterinary practices have gained importance and are being adopted by livestock farmers in many organic livestock farms to sustain the livestock in good health and for producing safe and eco-friendly organic produce to meet the increasing demands of health-conscious consumers.